The next topic of the day is we will be talking about the webmaster tools. We're trying to get found by people, and people use search engines. People use Google, Yahoo, Bing, AltaVista, Lycos, AOL, lots of ways to search. Um, and so what we're going to talk about are the two big search engines and what to do on a technical level to get found by the search engines which in turn get found by people. So this will be more concrete than what the abstract of what we talked about a moment ago. If you haven't, um, if you close the folder, let me get back to it one more time, um, on your desktop, in the computer window, in the network location, classroom data, drive Z, Z as in zebra, in my folder called Campus SEO, there is a document in there, Campus SEO 2, Webmaster Tools. Copy that to your desktop or flash drive. Let's open it, look at it, and discuss it. All right, did everyone find that document? Anyone need a little help getting it? Let's actually start on page two. Let's skip page one for the moment, jump to page two. I have a section here about conversion goals. Conversions. I mentioned this before. It, uh, it's important to mention again. A conversion is a kind of a goal. It's any sort of action that you want people to accomplish. One of the famous conversion goals, of course, is to convert a non-customer into a customer. So someone that walks by my store on Main Street have not, has not been converted yet. Until he walks in and buys, is that a conversion? Well, it takes a lot of effort to reach into uh, your pocket, and even more effort to then open that wallet, and even more effort to then put that credit card down and buy that product. So that's another conversion, uh, to buy the product, in addition to just walking in the store. That's a conversion. They were not in the store, now they're in the store. <coughs> so I've converted them into at least walking into the store. Even better is that they bought something. So there's lots of types of conversions that we can define. You must decide the goals of your company early on. In my fictional business, Victor's Bakery, I want people to buy my cupcakes. That's a conversion goal. In order to get to that goal, I have many conversion goals before that point. For example, you don't need to accomplish all of these, but these are a lot of great things that you can do. And that reminds me, I'm going to show you this other link that will be useful for more ideas. So, for example, one of my conversions, one of my goals, is I want to get followers on Twitter. Well, Twitter is social media. If I have followers on Twitter, I have an audience. If I'm driving to work and I'm listening to the radio, I'm a captive audience. Therefore, I hear the ads. Maybe I tune them out. Maybe literally, then I switch stations. So a lot of us are going to change the, change the radio station or the TV channel. We're going to ignore it. A lot of us are also not going to do that, either purpose, purposely or accidentally. We're going to be an audience to that message. So social media, we want followers, we want an audience, so that we, when we put out a message, when we tweet on Twitter, when we say, use this exclusive coupon for 10% off, and we have 100 followers, some of those followers are going to follow through. Some of them will use that coupon. If I have 100 followers, maybe two will use the coupon. Well, that's a pretty small ratio. That's, what, zero? That's 2%. Well, if I've got... Uh, a thousand followers, two percent is more people. If I got five hundred followers, two percent again is more people. If I got ten thousand followers, that's even more people. If I've got seven million followers like McDonald's, two percent is a lot of people. So the more followers I have on Twitter, for example, the more of an audience I could have to complete a conversion goal. Another thing that I might want to do is 
get social interactions, which would be like likes and shares and comments on Facebook. So again, I want to build an audience on Facebook, I want to post something on Facebook, but I want social interactions. I want likes, shares, and comments. The reason for that is, let's say I post something on Facebook, a really tasty photo of, of, a, of a cupcake from my cupcake company, and people really like the photo, they shared it. So if that gets shared, where does it go? To the friends and more people on Facebook that I hadn't reached myself yet. I might have had 50 likes and I might have reached, let's say, 50 people, but one of those persons had 500 friends and they shared my cupcake photo to their 500 friends. So some of those friends then might also share it or comment or like or follow me, like my page. So I'm building an audience again. So social interactions, Facebook, Twitter, Google+, uh, Pinterest, all of them have some sort of social interaction. Even like the newest uh, kid on the block, Periscope. Who's heard of Periscope? If you haven't, you need to research it. Uh, Periscope is the brand new social network where it's all about video. You say, well, great, so is YouTube. No, this is live video. You turn on the Periscope app and you can broadcast to all your followers live at that moment. They'll get a notification that says Victor's Bakery is live. They'll join your channel, watch what you're doing, ask you questions, interact with you, tap to give you hearts, and then you can have them invite their friends and family and followers. So you get more of an audience. Uh, so I've used it for maybe a couple of months now. It's probably three months old, maybe four months old. I've used it for maybe two and a half months or so. It's, it's cool. I like it. For business, it opens up a brand new avenue uh, of, of direct audience participation. Um, you know, if I'm this bakery that I'm talking about, I could start a, a Periscope broadcast and have my customers uh, with me in the kitchen. And I'm asking, hey, everyone, what kind of cookie do you want me to make today? And then I get responses and I do it live. And that's causing that interaction, uh, that one-on-one -on -one connection, uh, which, of course, ultimately, I want sales. But as I get these followers and I build more of an audience, that could lead to the sales. So then I want get site visits via Google+. I want to create a Google Plus account. Remember last week, we did some searching and some companies showed up in a nice call-out box on, on Google search. They were separate from the rest. They had a star ratings and they had a little map and all that great stuff that made me want to go there instead of the others. That's because they had a Google Plus page. If you've got a Google Plus page, that will help you on Google search to drive more traffic to your website. The website where I'm going to sell something, have people sign up for my newsletter, have people request a quote. So I want a Google Plus page to help me get more traffic to my site. I want more hits on my home page. I want to drive traffic to my, to my website. Here I mentioned Google Plus, but I could also bring traffic to my site via Twitter. Well, why do I want more hits on my website? At the moment, especially for e-commerce, you cannot sell products on social media yet. It's coming. But I can't sell my cupcake through Twitter. I can't sell my uh, birthday cakes through Pinterest. I can't sell anything through Periscope. I do all of that on my website. It's coming. Uh, Pinterest and Twitter and such are already giving the big boys the ability to sell products. You can buy stuff via Amazon via a tweet. If you follow Amazon and they show a product, all you have to do is tweet to Amazon a certain keyword and because Twitter then is connected with your Amazon and you have your credit card set up, you can buy something via tweet if it's all set up. Pinterest will have something like that too for regular people. The big companies already have something like that. But eventually, a smaller companies will have that ability. Not yet, though. So therefore, I want more traffic to my more hits on my homepage, my website, because that's where I can sell something. That's where I can complete that ultimate conversion. I want to get more shares on my blog posts, which are on my site. 
So blogging is an important aspect of modern SEO. The search engines rank your site higher if you have relevant, timely, authoritative content. So um, um, timely, as in you have if you've updated if you have not updated your website in a year, it's not as timely anymore. If you've updated it in three months, six months, that's better. If you've updated it yesterday, that might even be better. Timely. Relevant content. You're putting content on your website that people would care about, people would be searching for, people would want to download or share on social media or print or forward via email. So relevant content to your target audience that you've defined in the previous exercise. And authoritative, this is content that you're creating that uh, people uh, deem to be useful and therefore the search engines also then deem you better than your competition. Uh, it's sort of in a sense of a popularity contest in a bit. Uh, popularity breeds popularity, traffic gives you more traffic, shares give you more shares. And so if I am blogging, if I'm posting on my blog, on my website, on a regular basis, I'm being timely, I'm being relevant, and I'm being, and I'm trying to create authority. I'm putting out on my web design company, I'm putting out a free tutorial on how to set up WordPress. I'm putting out a blog post on what's the worst social network. I'm putting out a blog post about top five tips for Periscope. I'm putting out content that's making me an authority in web design via blogging. So if your website does not have a blog, it would be helpful to set up a blog on your website because that's how you accomplish those three things. Relevant, timely, and authoritative. Because when I say if your website hasn't been updated in a year, I'm not saying to change the layout and add new graphics and change the about page or add a new product. I'm saying put out content out to the internet that people care about. Blogging. Has anyone ever done any blogging before in this class? A few people? Okay. I'm going to teach a class on blogging where I go into much more detail. We brainstorm. We use WordPress and Tumblr for blogging. Tips and, <coughs> tips and tricks, advice, all of that stuff. Um, look for it in the school's catalog. I don't know exactly when it is, but there's a blogging class coming maybe next month, maybe in a month and a half or so. Sure. Yeah, that's totally fine. I'm using the classic word of blog, but any uh, anything you call it, it's technically the blog, the newsroom. I might have a blog on my on my on my bakery website that I don't call it the blog. I call it the kitchen, or you know, uh, excerpts from the kitchen. When I added blog within um, two weeks, I um, had more traffic. Came up. Mm -hmm. um, on page one. Oh great, so there, there we go. Once you started to add content out to the world and the search engines were seeing that, then you started to go up. So I want to get shares. I, the, the thing is, I want, I want to blog and then I want to get shares. Again, that's related to the other social interactions. If I publish a great blog post that people care about, hopefully then they'll share it on Twitter, Facebook, Pinterest, whatever. Therefore reaching their audience, therefore increasing my audience. That's why you visit so many websites. Every website nowadays somewhere has a button. Tweet this. Like it on Facebook. Reblog this or whatever. It's it's making it's very easy uh, to share. YouTube has all those sharing buttons to share that video that that goes around and you find it and that gets them traffic. What does traffic do on YouTube? Traffic is equal to money. Uh, you can get paid for having a YouTube channel. Um, so traffic uh, could come from shares because shares increases your audience. 
one other marketing tactic here or conversion goal get subscribers to my coupon newsletter okay newsletter you might see these throughout different websites sign up for a newsletter that you never do because maybe you don't have a very good call to action you don't have a compelling reason why to subscribe to that newsletter or maybe conversely you are subscribed to too many newsletters because they're all sound so enticing so you want on your website perhaps to have a, a newsletter to have a way for people to subscribe to your blog subscribe to your site the reason for that is again another captive audience you can send them emails every once in a while once a week once a month whatever people of course get very tired of email and they might unsubscribe so you have to be careful the balance between too many emails not enough emails between emails that are selling them something constantly or emails that are giving them like let's say a preview of your latest blog post and just because you've got a button on your website that says subscribe now doesn't mean they will they need that call to action they need something that entices them they need to answer the question why would I subscribe to your newsletter subscribe to our, our newsletter for exclusive coupons that's a good enticement then they're gonna see in their inbox oh another 10% off coupon I just bought something two weeks ago but it's 10% off so they buy again I know I struggle with that a lot with fries and so having a newsletter then builds this database of uh, clients that you can market to via email email marketing is also another viable way to market not just social media next I could get virtual clients which are my followers to come to my physical location so obviously if I've got a store it's on Main Street in San Diego uh, I want to get all of these supposed followers that I have. I've got 5,000 followers, but I want to get some of them to come to the, to the store. Maybe there's going to be exclusive sales at the store. I've got 5,000 followers, but maybe, you know, 500 are in Canada, and 500 are in Mexico, and 200 are in Europe, and so forth. So some amount of them, hopefully, are local. And therefore, when I tweet or put on Facebook or put on Google+, Plus or Periscope or whatever, everyone come down to the store this weekend, and use this exclusive Twitter coupon, use this exclusive Periscope coupon, 40% off. And that's going to entice people to come to the store physically if you have a physical location. That's obviously a big endeavor. It's a big conversion goal. Next to the ultimate one, get clients to buy my cupcakes. My original goal for being, for being a bakery is to sell cupcakes, but all of these goals help me toward that you don't need to accomplish them all but the more that you do the more irons in the fire the more lures you're casting the more fish you catch yes I know it's an importance of social media and blogging and everything but are there any circumstances or businesses that doesn't make sense to actually have social media like I'm thinking like a plumber like what kind of information would be good on Twitter or you could still definitely use social media for any sort of service because th this is how you can be uh, here's one scenario uh, this plumber is trying to get clients of course so they get on on Twitter and they start to search uh, like hashtag fail or hashtag help you know they start to search keywords on Twitter uh, very specifically perhaps you know oh you can search for broken toilet people might say oh my toilet is broken today you know you're searching for these things that a plumber could uh, could fix. Once you've identified those people on social media, you can start to tweet to them. You can start to reach out to them. Uh, someone that has a very specific goal at that point that your company can complete, that's a potential client. So that's how you can reach in, like, if I'm driving and I hear uh, an ad, if I'm thinking to myself, or if I'm saying to myself out loud while I'm driving, you know, I gotta find a CPA. What if the CPA on the other side of the radio could hear me and talk directly to me and say, I'm a CPA, I'm in your location. That's what social media is. You can find these people that need that specific uh, problem solved and you can solve it. So you're saying it's, uh, you can't use something for work, so it's supposed to keep finding you and you're find this, you're fine. Exactly. That's the other side of social media. Yes, they could find you, but there's nothing to stop you from finding them. 
Uh, and there's, of course, best practices and such because you could seem like a spammy site. If all of your tweets are just tweeting to people, 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 like, look at this product, look at this item, you know, you still have to balance it with, you know, non-sales stuff. So it, it is a, a balancing act, but that's what we can talk about in the social media class. But that's one thing that I would say about, yeah, every company in theory could have an online presence in social media. Some might be a little trickier than others, but at the very least I can say it's a way to try to find customers. Testimonies on the site, sure, but then that assumes that people visit the site. Uh, if I get more followers to the site through these other methods, that will help, and that will show okay, they've got they've got testimony testimonials and such. But I sort of feel testimonies are useful, definitely, but they're not that useful, perhaps on your site, because there's already Yelp. There's already Angie's List, there's already Kudzu, there's already TripAdvisor, there's already all of these places where people are, uh, are going to, to rate and review and comment. That it is, I think, a little falling by the wayside to have a big dedicated testimonials page on your site. Maybe a snippet or two here and there on your site, but let that all happen on Yelp and curate it on Yelp and, and respond to people there. You should see that it's a long, involved process to get from point A, which is a potential client follows you on Twitter, to point Z. The follower visits the store and buys a product. That is why search engine optimization goes hand in hand with search engine marketing. Also an emerging term that takes both into account is content marketing. You can read more there at Forbes. Content marketing, that might be a, a term that you're hearing more. There's been SEO for a long time. SEM is really more known to, to us that are in the business doing it. And perhaps a new term that'll take more root is content marketing. Because I'm a web designer, I'm trying to get clients, but I'm still going to create content for clients to find me. I'm a dog walker, I want to get more clients so I can walk their dogs, but I'm still going to create content on social media. I'm going to market my content, I'm going to get it to the right eyeballs so that they can con be converted. So you can read on there, what is content marketing? It's a blog post, even big old famous Forbes magazine has a blog, <coughs> I'm putting out free content, I want you of course to subscribe to their you know, whatever it is they have, their their trade magazine or whatever Forbes does. But they've got a they've got a, a blog specifically by Josh uh, Steinle. And uh, pretty timely, you know, from uh, at the end of last year. It's not a five-year-old blog post, it's not a two-year-old blog post, this stuff changes. And it's probably also updated. Any questions on page two? So people will go back into blog material that they prepared and freshen it up and repackage it? Yeah, you can do, a tactic is that, yeah, you wrote something a year ago, but things change. So you could, uh, you could update it and mark on the blog post, updated, that you've updated it. And then tweet it again. You might have tweeted it a year ago, nine months ago, but now you've changed it so it doesn't hurt to publish it again. You might have new followers that never saw the first tweet. Even if you have the same followers as before, uh, they will be reacquainted with that blog post that perhaps they found useful and now it's updated so it's even more useful. So yes, you can update your old content. Repurpose your old content. Of course, they have to balance what is old. If you, pub if you publish something last month and publish it again this month, that might not be as effective. That might seem a bit spammy. Any other questions on page two? I want to show you one thing related to this, then we'll take a break, then we'll go back to page one. Um, these are some examples of what you can do for marketing. Let me show you a website of one of my colleagues. She's compiled a great list of other ideas for marketing. 
So if you go to your web browser, go to the website brandgfx.com, brand graphics, brandgfx.com, brand graphics, go to brand graphics. We'll go to the blog. One, uh, one, one tip here, this would also work if you go to brandgraphics.com slash blog. And the point of me telling you that is, again, if your website has a blog, you should set it up so that it's that way. Mywebsite.com slash blog. <clears throat> Victorsdogwalking.com slash blog. This is becoming de facto, or de jour. It's becoming the way that this is default. Uh, sometimes you've also got blog.brandgraphics.com. That one I think is less popular because technically that's a different website domain and therefore the traffic is counted differently by the analytics. So I'm seeing that less. I'm seeing much more that it's the website slash blog. So if you've got a blog or going to build a blog, try to set it up that way. That'll, that'll work better for you for your SEO. But anyway, I'm going to go to the home page first. Branding and graphic design for successful marketing. Have a, there is a testimonial right there, but just one back from Yelp. Uh, some questions to ask you. Um, right here, newsletter. Why? Because you're going to get uh, news marketing tips to help you grow your business. They're on all the social networks. There's a phone number right there, uh, and so forth. So go over to the blog. And this is the part. Uh, it's a few pages back, but I'm going to try through search right here. Um, the search is, um, I think, exhaustive. Let me search for this first. Uh, there's a blog post in here that's called something like the exhaustive, the exhaustive marketing. It might be too broad, but there's one. Top ten marketing tips. That's a good one. But there's one in here somewhere. I'm forgetting the exact title of it. But it's something like the exhaustive list of marketing techniques. Say that again. Comprehensive list of ways Comprehensive. Comprehensive. There we go. So search the blog for the term comprehensive. Thank you for that. Comprehensive. And then when you search comprehensive, there should be one that says the comprehensive list of ways to market your business. Published March 2013. 2013 in computer time? That's old, but updated this year. So search comprehensive. Hopefully it's the first link that you see there. Click on its title. Yes? Real quickly, um, versus changing the author date, the problem with that is that it will it will break it could possibly break the link to the original post because depending how you've got your WordPress uh, permalinks set up uh, your blog could be based on your addresses of your blog could be based on date so then now if you've changed the date of your blog post you've got a new link technically so that could break existing links and um, yeah because then now now the search engines are gonna start to pick up broken links they're gonna pick up that traffic has come from a location that is now no longer is existent and the search engines will see broken links and the search engines don't like broken links so that's a bit of an advanced question, but a good one. In WordPress, you can change the date of particular blog posts themselves, but as we just talked about, that could break your link. So you should leave it, but then add something that says updated, especially at the beginning, so that when the search engines pick it up, 
and display it on a search, it shows the updated text. So if we look at it, it says right here, right at the top, updated. Yes, we know this list is by no means comprehensive. Our apologies for misleading those of you who thought you'd found the holy grail of marketing. And it goes on and on. Perhaps a better, better title would have been the almost comprehensive, always expanding, never complete list of ways to market your business. So in no order. But these are a bunch of ideas. Obviously, it'd be great if each of these was clickable to give you more information. But this is a good starting point. So word of mouth, asking for referrals networking, etc., etc., referral sources and testimonials, like from Yelp, you've probably heard of, Angie's List, who's heard of Angie's List? A few people. Who's heard of Kudzu? No one. You should look into a couple people and others. Social networking, of course, Facebook, LinkedIn. There's a link there to show you the 200 social networks that you've never heard of. You don't need to get on them all, but if you know about them and know that a particular social network is all about artists and I'm trying to get hired as an artist, I might want to get on that social network. Ad exchange networks, directory listings, PPC, of course paying for ads or placement, promoted posts, print, commercials, infomercials, editorials, getting on Wikipedia, webinars and podcasts, so lots and lots and lots of ways to market your online presence, to reach an audience, because traditionally TV, radio, print, now social media and all of these related. Yes? Um, when you make a link from your website to someone else's um, article, mm -hmm. that gives us permission. No, you don't really need to ask to link your to link your website to their website. Most likely they will welcome that because you're giving them traffic. You're giving them what is known as a backlink, which is something we'll talk about. We want backlinks. Mm -hmm. So we can link to anyone's site. It's helping them. And eventually we want links to our site. Um, so no, you don't, you don't need to ask to link. But if you let them know, let's say I have a blog post like this and I linked to another web design company and I link them there. So then I tweet from my company, um, you know, the top 10 list of whatever, uh, special guest appearance by whatever, and I mention the other Twitter account of the other client, I let them know about it, and what they could do then is retweet that to their 500 followers. So if I let them know that I'm giving them a shout out, that might help me out in the future. Some of these, of course, go from free to not free, from easy to not easy, from I've heard of that to I've never heard of that. But this is going to give you an idea to start to get started. Short form video like Vine, Instagram, and animated GIFs. Animated GIFs are pretty hot at the moment. Who knows if they'll always be, but at the moment they are. A simple little animation, two frames, that's eye catching. Find a university or professional course in your arena and offer to be a guest speaker. Okay, you're doing it for free, but you have then this captive audience that you're hammering them that, yes, I'm teaching you this, but you can also get the full package at my company. So lots of ways to get on people's radars. If you don't know what something means, you can usually select something Right-click it, and you'll have search. And you'll get the best answers. Does it say white pages that used to exist? <laughs> no, that means a little bit more technically white pages in a technical sense. <laughs> Wasn't the white pages part of the yellow pages, or was it separate? <laughs> oh, yes. It's still published. It's still published, but it's probably that thin now. <coughs> All right, so we'll, we'll leave with that for the moment. Um, even I myself wouldn't know them all, but any questions on any of these listed here? Okay, let's take a break.
When we come back, then we'll skip back to page one and actually set this up. This will give you a moment to gather, make sure you've got your password and such if you brought it to today. Let's take a 10 minute break. We'll be back at 7.18. When we do, we will set up Webmaster Tools.